Page 30, Climbing a Monkey Bar. On page 29 at the bottom, they're introducing a new note for the bass clef. That's the, right now the bass clef's in the bottom staff. And that is an E. It is the next to the top space. There's, you have a top space and a bottom space and two middle spaces. Well, this is the top middle. Are we confused yet or not? They'd show it in the book. Just memorize that note. And I am trusting that you know the names of all the notes in the music presented so far and that you know them instantly. Yet you're not going through and writing in the names of the notes in the music. No, 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 no. You, you got to memorize them. You can do the play it and say it drill, like in Monkey Bar. Just play it and say it. For the right hand, you, your thumb is here. And it's a, just forget the rhythm. You just play and say the note. C, E, G, E, D, C. And for the left hand, you're down here is C, E, G. And then later it's G, F, E. Just play and say the name of the note over and over until it's automatic. You don't have to go as fast as I was going. I've been doing this forever. But again, I'm leaving it up to you to know the names of the notes. we got a lot more notes to add, so don't get behind on those. We don't have to worry about learning more notes on the keyboard. There's only seven of them, and we've already covered all those. So you should know the names of all the keys on the keyboard. And since we've had sharps and flats now, you also know the names of all the black keys because they're in relation to the white keys. You know? yeah, go watch those videos again, and I can confuse you again back there. Let's talk monkey bar business here. It's two lines long, two short lines long. Treble and bass clef. No sharps or flats in the key signature. We're in the key of C major. And it went three, four times. So let's take it one hand at a time, make sure we understand what each hand is doing. Right hand, you're starting with thumb on middle C, put you here. And it's just here, C. One, two. And the second line is similar to that, and you can figure that out. Left hand, you're here. Back here, we're in C position down here. See, we're not in this middle C position. Now we're in C position. Both hands are in C position because the bottom note of each hand is a C. We call that C position. And there's all kinds of C positions on the piano. Because I can be here or here or here or wherever. And the music tells us where to go. And it says here. So it's here. And then three beats of rest. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. One. You get the idea? So you go through, get each hand working, and then go back through and put the hands together. And that would be like the last two measures of each line, starting with the third measure. We're, we're in this position now, and that we have a G and an E together, here, and then here, and then here. So we're using different fingers, and that's important we get that feeling of what it's like to use different fingers. One, two, three, one, two, three. And the second line is similar to that, but you can do that on your own, I'm sure. And once we have the notes and the rhythms and all that worked out and then go back and get rid of the hesitation so it's a steady beat all the way through and then we think about the interpretation they don't give us any information on interpretation in the music as you get more advanced they will start adding more symbols into the music to help you how to interpret it right now we got to deal with what we can deal with and the first thing would be the natural accents in three four time it's one two three one two Accent or feel that accent. You can force it if you need to. But eventually you just want to feel it. Just imagine people dancing to this. One, two, three, or one as you play it. You'll feel it. it you just feel that. It's very slight. Then we can think about maybe the phrases. There are no phrasing marks. I have to listen to the melody, wherever that is, and I have to play it kind of quick so I can hear it. And here, the first measure of each line is melody. And then the right hand gets it from there, so it's this. That's a musical thought, a musical sentence, a musical phrase. So I can connect all that together and then lift up after it. A little lift. 
like taking a breath before I go on. So when I finish the first line here, I lift up before I play the note in the next line. Here. And I do the second line, and it's another phrase. So I add the phrasing in, something like that. As far as how fast you go, that's up to you. There's no nothing marked here. What do you think? Not faster, slower, and it's somewhere in the middle. And if you're getting this okay, I can challenge you a little more, then I say bring out the melody. Well, the first two measures of each line is melody, so it's all the same. But the last two measures, the melody is in the right hand. We want to hear that, and the left hand is very soft. So this is very light, very light here, and this is a little heavier. Both lines are that. So we hear the melody, that's what we want. Let's play this together very slowly and check all the notes and rhythms. I'm going to play both hands about the same. I'm not going to bring out the melody. We're not performing it. We're just checking notes and rhythms. So I'll give us three counts. So let's do it. You should play the same note I'm playing at the same time I'm playing it. One, ready, go. Three. 